God is not the author. God is not the author of confusion. By Dr. Norlane Dindang Mababaya. God is not the author of the book that underwent revision. Christian authorities until now are coming up with revisions after revisions and translations after translations of the Bible. But while they are trying to make it appear to the public that it is the word of God, the different revisions of the Bible by men however, simply belie such an assertion. In fact, these revisions serve as concrete proofs that all the biblical books are not at all divinely inspired. This is because it is beyond man's ability to correct the work of his creator, who alone is almighty and perfect. Even the Bible also perceives God to be perfect, Matthew 5 verse 48, and that his words Even the Bible also perceives God to be perfect, Matthew Even the Bible all in fact In fact, these revisions serve as concrete proofs that all the biblical books are not at all divinely inspired. This is because it is beyond man's ability to correct the work of his creator, who alone is almighty and perfect. Even the Bible also perceives God to be perfect, Matthew 5 verse 48, and that his words are pure, Proverbs 30 verse 5, living and powerful, Hebrews 4 verse 12. As such, no man nor any group of men should ever revise God's book. To come up with millions, if not billions of copies of any of the versions and revisions of the Bible does not only entail a waste of money and other resources but more so. A waste of time and effort on the part of its patrons. The Bible, touted to be a holy book by Christians but surprisingly, is not I for God did not say so, will just create confusions and deceptions to peoples. This work, just like any of our publications does not intend to insult the Christians of any sect and denominations but to guide and enlighten them to the truth. Anyone who reads the Bible will never find single verse in it that claims that God is its author. Neither did he inspired its different authors. Instead, one you will read the following biblical verse that clearly implies that God is not the author of the Bible. For God is not the author of confusion but of peace. 1 Corinthians 14.33 The Bible, written by men, creates confusions instead of guidance. It encourages diversity instead of unity in sex instead of universal brotherhood. Above all, it teaches mysteries in life instead of truthful teachings. The worst effect of the Bible is for man to deny the existence of his creator. It is because of the absurdities and confusion of dogmas it inculcates in the minds of many people. Without knowing the Holy Quran as the book of God readers of the Bible who know its real nature become atheists. There are American scholars who became atheists because of their disbelief in the Bible. Some of them even wrote about the defective nature of the Bible. For instance, G. W. Foote and W. P. Ball jointly wrote the Bible Handbook. The American Atheist Press, John Bowden, edition, 1982, p.37, made the observations of the said handbook, Everything I Share. Absurdities, indecencies, contradiction, unfilled prophecies, broken promises of God, obscenities, sadosachism, and impossibilities. Robert G. Ingersoll came up with a booklet concerning the Bible entitled A Few Resorts for Doubting the Inspiration of the Bible. He enumerated more than 60 different reasons who man should not believe in the Bible as an inspired. In The Bible Contradicts Itself, 1982, edited by John Bowden readers would find it very tiresome to verify in the Bible many contradictions enumerated therein. The more than 200 discrepancies exposed by the Ahur are sufficient proofs to negate the extravagant and wholly untrue claim that the Bible is the Word of God. For other presentation of the contradictions and errors of the Bible, readers may find Ahmad Didats is the Bible God's Word? 1980, AMD Malana M. Ramatulla Kervanvi's book. Azarul Hack Part 2, Contradictions and Arrows in the Bibliical Text, 1989, Very Scholarly. Also, it must be pointed out that the Christian readers of the Bible cannot deny the truth that the Bible exists in different versions. Different versions also call for several revisions to correct the inconsistencies and errors in the Bible. We accept its authors to commit inconsistencies because of the individual's references. They commit errors because, as human beings, they are subject to mistake. Very clear. Christian publisher who kept on producing many revisions of the Bible are only deceiving peoples of the world. Examples of the revisions are follows.
William Tyndall, 1525, Corvidale, 1535, The Great Bible, 1539, The Geneva, 1560, Reims, 1582, King James Version 1611, the 1769 revision of the King James Versio. Revision of the King James Version, 1870, English Revised Version, 1881-1885, American Standard Version, 1901, Revision of the American Standard Version, 1937. Revised Standard Version of New Testament, 1946, Revision Standard Version of the Bible, 1952, Second Edition of the Translation of the New Testament, 1971, The New King James Version, 1979. Why should any sensible man be the object of glaring deception when different men have revised the Bible for many times? How come the Bible has undergone many revisions? Why until now, the Christian world keep on revising the Bible? For instance, just very recently, the National Council of Churches in the U.S. sponsored a major verse-by-verse -verse overhaul of the Revised Standard Version, RSV, of 1952. They aimed to come up with the new Revised Standard Version. Rev. Bruce Metzer, the new Revised Chief Translator mentions. No fewer than 26 modern English translations have appeared during the landmark Revised Standard Version of 1952. This month a major verse-by-verse -verse overhaul of the work. The new Revised Standard Version is being shipped to America bookstores. In the around the world, for both private reading and public worship. But as more and more new translation and revisions jostle for market position. The familiar King James phrase are gradually obligated from the common memory bank of the English-speaking peoples. Barring a miracle, it appears there will never again be a single standard English Bible and that is a wrenching change for Christendom. Richard N. Austin, Farewell to These and He's, Time. May 21, 1990, p.59. It must point it out that the reviser of the revised standard version of the New Testament made the King James as their original source. Unfortunately, the revisers of the King James Version based it upon the Greek text that was marred by mistake, containing the accumulated arrows of the 14 centuries of manuscript copying. This bold criticism about the Bible comes from the Christian authorities themselves. The Christian scholars responsible for the Revised Standard Version mention this in the first preface of the Revised Standard Verion published in 1952 by the Melton Book Company, Dallas, Texas. USA, the reviser made the following comments of the King James Version. Yet the King James Version has grave defects. By the middle of the 19th century, the development of biblical studies and the discovery of many manuscripts more ancient tea on those upon which the King James Version was based, made it manifest that these defects are so many serious as to call for revision of the English translation. 1952, p.3. Concerning the translation of the Bible, the English-speaking peoples until now could not agree with a real standard translation of the Bible. Different groups of Bible scholars have been coming up with the translations off the Bible. The Christian world could not agree which of the various English translation of the Bible they should follow for private and public worship. They get confused as to which of the following four popular translations of the Bible really surveys as the standardized translation of the Bible. The King James Version, the Amplified New Testament, the Living New Testament, or the Revised Standard Version. When will the Christian world stop revising and translating the Bible? Will they ever come you up with a final standard verion of the Bible? These questions pose confusions to the readers of the Bible who truly seek the truth and divine guidance. Unless they will read and believe the Holy Quran as the book in truth from Allah, the one and only God. Tayyi will never get away from the confusions that the numerous discrepancies instill in the minds of the readers. God is not the author of the book that belittle him. If God is the author of the Bible or that God did inspire its different authored, how come the Bible speaks of God, contrary to his very own divine nature? The verses allow himself to create confusions about himself? Could one belittle his self? Similarly, is it inconsistencies in the Bible concerning God? 1. Are there other gods beside God? Exodus 20-1-6, Isaiah 43 colon 10, 44 colon 6 verses Deuteronomy 6 14, 1 Chronicles 16 verse 25, Psalm 82 verses 1 and 6, Jeremiah 10 verse 11, Zephaniah 2 verse 11, John 10 verse 34. I am the Lord your God. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage? You shall have no other gods before me. 
You shall not take for yourself any carved image, or any likeness of nothing that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, but showing mercy to thousand to those who love me and keep my commandments. Exodus 20 verses 1-6 you are my witness, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. Isaiah 44 verse 6 The following are some biblical verses that claim that there are gods beside God. You shall not after gods, the gods of the people who are all around you. Deuteronomy 6 verse 14 And the temple which I build will be great, for our God is greater than all gods. 2 Chronicles 2 verse 5 For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised, he is also to be feared above all gods. Chronicles 16 25 God stands in the congregation of the mighty, he judges among the gods. Psalm 82 verse 1 I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Psalm 82 verse 1 Thus you shall say to them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. Jeremiah 10 verse 11 The Lord will be awesome to them, for he will reduce to nothing to nothing all the gods of the earth. People shall worship him each from his place, indeed all the shores of the nations. Zephaniah 2 verse 11 Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you a god? John 10 verse 34 2. Is there a man greater than or equal to God? Is it not that God is infinite, he has no beginning and no end? Because, if God is merely the first, then somebody must have created him and that somebody must be the one and only true God. How come Melchizedek according to Paul has such qualities? Isaiah 48 verse 12 verses Hebrews 7 verses 1 to 3 Listen to me O Jacob and Israel, my called, I am he, I am the first, I am also the last, Isaiah 48 verse 12. The Bible characterizes Melchizedek as greater than God for it says that he has no beginning of days nor end of life. Whereas, God is merely the first. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, meaning, king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Hebrews 7 verses 1 to 3. 3. Does God dwell in darkness or in light or in heaven? 1 Timothy 6 verses 15 to 16, Isaiah 66 verse 1 verses 1 Kings 8 verse 12, Psalm 18 verse 11 which he will manifest in his own time, he who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality and unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. 1 Timothy 6 verses 15 to 16. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? Isaiah 66 verse 1. The Bible shows that God dwells in darkness, then Solomon spoke, the Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud. 1 Kings 8 verse 12 He made darkness his secret place, his canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Psalm 18 verse 11 For dot d o people see God or not. Jeremiah 10 verse 10, John 1 verse 18 5 37, John 5 verse 37, 1 John 4 verse 12, 1 Timothy 1 verse 17, 1 Timothy 6 verses 16 to 17, Hebrews 11 verse 27 verses Genesis 26 verse 2, Genesis 35 verse 9, Exodus 24 verses 9 to 10, Job 42 verse 5, Amos 9 verse 1 Genesis 26 verse 2. But the Lord is the true God, He is the living God and the everlasting King. At his wrath the earth will tremble, and the nations will not be able to abide his indignation. Jeremiah 10 verse 10 No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. John 1, 18 And the Father himself, who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. John 5 verse 37 Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 
1 Timothy 1 verse 17. He who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom be honor and everlasting forever. Amen. 1 Timothy 6 verses 15 to 16. By faith he forsake Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Hebrews 11, 27. No has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfect in us. 1 John 4 verse 12. The Bible narrates that there were men who saw God. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not got down to Egypt, dwell in the land of which I shall tell you. Genesis 26 verse 2. Then God appeared to Jacob again, when he came from Padan Aram, and blessed him. Genesis 35 verse 9. Then Moses went up, also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire stone, and it was like the very heavens in its clarity. Exodus 24 verses 9 to 10. I have heard of you by the ear, but now my eye sees you. Job 42 verse 5. I saw the Lord standing by the altar, and he said, Strike the door's post, that the threshold may shake. Amos 9 verse 1. 5. Can anyone see God's face and live or perish? Exodus 33 verse 20 verses Genesis 32 verse 30, Exodus 3 23 verse 11, Numbers 12 colon 6 8. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me, and live. Exodus 33 verse 20. There were prophets who had seen God's face and lived as narrated below. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Genesis 3 verse 30 So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face, as man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Exodus 33 verse 11 then he shade, hear now my words, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision and I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses, he is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in a dark sayings, and seize the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Numbers 12 colon 6 8. 6. Does God make lies or not? Titus 1 verse 1, Hebrews 6 verse 18 verses Kings 22 colon 22 23, Judges 9 verse 23. In hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Titus 1 verse 1. Two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Hebrews 6 verse 18. The following biblical verses narrate that God created lies. The Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets, and he said, You shall pursue him, and also prevail. Go out and do so. Now therefore, look. The Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth if ask these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you, 1 Kings 22 hours 22 minutes and 23 seconds. God sent a spirit of ill will between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, Judge 9.23.